It's the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting for the year. And after two days of deliberation, the central bank governor and members of the committee intimate Nigerians and some of its key decisions. Man, let me welcome all of you. First, to, the committee uh, takes a look at how activities the, at the international market is affecting uh, the Nigerian economy following the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Russian-Ukraine yeah, war, and on the domestic front, insecurity, costs of public debts, increased spending, and the trend in inflationary pressures. However, the committee notes that its interventions in the last few months are yielding results. On month-on-month -month basis, however, headline inflation decelerated to 1.24 percent in October 2022 from 1.36 percent in the preceding month, an indication that price development is responding to the bank's recent policy rate hikes. The governor then speaks on the decisions of the Monetary Policy Committee, which will see the tightening of monetary policy rate from 15.1% to 16.5% to tame rising inflation. The committee also retained the cash reserve ratio, CRR, at 32.5%, retained the liquidity ratio at 30%, the idea is to tame inflation, especially on food prices, which is likely to be affected owing to flooding in 33 states of the Federation. Particularly for rice or for, um, for grain such as maize, we know that we have our own strategic reserves, which we will use to moderate prices as they get more aggressive. We've been doing a strategic reserve program for almost three years and it is yielding results and we believe that that will help to moderate. Then comes an announcement on the new Naira notes. We will not shift any deadline. What we have done is not against the law. It is in tandem with the law. Tomorrow, which is the 23rd of November 2022, the president has graciously accepted to unveil the new currencies and the new currencies will be unveiled tomorrow. The central bank is confident that its intervention will yield the desired result in the coming days. To discuss further the Central Bank of Nigeria increase in rates today is Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Financial Derivatives Company, Bismarck Rawani. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Amarisha, for having me. Yeah, and I believe that this came as no surprise to you. The interest rates announced by the CBN is higher than the country's inflation, isn't it? So is the hike the silver bullet we need right now? I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a silver bullet. But like they say, Don Simpson said, shoot for the shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll be one of the stars. And you can see that's what's happening here. So what has happened is that cumulatively, Nigeria has increased interest rates, the policy rate, by 5% in the last few months. But inflation has only increased by 3.38%. So if, if inflation was a major issue, right, and interest rate was a silver bullet, then by now you would have solved it. But in economics, we have what they call the outside lag. What does the outside lag mean? The outside lag means that between when you take decisions and when the impact is felt on the economy, that time frame. But in the meantime, other intervening factors have come in, like the flood, right. Right? the items that are under our control, the variables that are under our control are probably fewer than the things that are within our control. So it's not a silver bullet, but it's a major effort. And what the central bank government did today was to be candid with the facts, one, that uh, inflation remains an existential threat to Nigeria. Two, that as a matter of fact, that what is, what's happening is that exogenous shocks continue to bedevil Nigeria and that you have to do something about it. And not doing anything about it was not an option anymore. That's what happened. Yeah, and it also seems like we're talking over some people's heads right now. So what are the factors that actually contribute to inflation and bringing us to where we are right now, leading to the <coughs> CBS decision? Yeah. That's the, that's the, you know, we have what they call necessary conditions and sufficient conditions. Now, what has happened is that the factors that are stoking inflation remain mainly, in our own judgment, the exchange rate. One. Two, the price of diesel. Three, 
money supply saturation, and four, exogenous shocks. So what we have tried to do is to liken, the, to, uh, to actually assume that inflation is caused mainly by money supply. But that is not the truth. The truth is that there are so many factors. So what, is it the exchange rate that leads to inflation, or is it inflation that leads to a weaker exchange rate? You've got to solve that. So you've got to go to the structure of the foreign exchange market, solve that, increase the supply, right? Reduce the rationing, remove restrictions, and allow the exchange rate in the official market to adjust so that you can achieve some convergence, which is the goal of the government and the central bank, actually. So we, we talk now, you want to talk about the drivers of inflation? Yes, these are the drivers of inflation. One, you can see here, the exchange rate is about 65 to 70 percent. The uh, diesel and imported and logistics cost is about 20.7 percent. Imported commodities is about less than 7 percent, and money supply saturation is less than 7 percent. So in all, the major culprit, uh, the exchange rate passed through and the price of diesel and energy costs. What can you do about that? You've got to deal with the structural issues of the exchange, foreign exchange market. You've got to deal with the energy costs. There's nothing we can do. And let's be clear that this is not a Nigeria-specific issue. Right. Inflation is a global phenomenon, but you, can do, you, you must do things that are peculiar to your own situation to deal with it. Right? So, again, the interest rate move is good. It's aggressive. But you must not only the policy rate, you must take the other interest rates, which are the treasury rates and all the other rates, so that people begin to save more and consume less. And that's the, that's the answer to this. Yeah, and when we were talking earlier, you spoke about the catch-22 situation with the um, Naira and the dollar, the performance of the Naira as against uh, the dollar. And that's because uh, the U.S. government, you say, has also increased its own interest rates. Yeah. The truth is that the U.S. has increased interest rates by 75 basis, 70, 75 basis points three times this year, and they're going to do another one in December. So essentially, every time they've increased interest rates, the dollar has become stronger. The dollar has gained 17 to 20% against other currencies. So if, if our Naira has lost 46%, which is what it has lost, the first 20-something percent is because of dollar strengthening. The other part is the Naira weakening. But it's not just Naira. You take, look at what's happening to the euro. The dollar and the euro are at par. The British pound has taken a knocking. Almost, almost other currencies have taken a knocking. So we shouldn't hit ourselves too hard that this has happened, but you must do those things that you can help to structure a market. What can you do? If you allow the market structure to be efficient, your diaspora flows will come into the market through the official window. The entertainment funds that you get from uh, you know, all your stars that are and footballers and all that will come into the market. That will increase the aggregate supply of foreign exchange and will be available for manufacturers and others to actually uh, have that access to that currency. So finally, where are we going with this? Well, <clears throat> all I do know is that this year and this Christmas, I'm, last time we met mm -hmm. here, I said it was going to be a, may, maybe a happy Christmas, but now I'm not so sure that's going to happen. What you are going to have is a bearish Christmas because the price of rice is up to 45000 It was about almost 30,000 last year. The price of a bag of flour was 15,000 last year. It's now 32,000. A turkey was 26,000. A full turkey was 26,000 last year. It's now 39,000. And of course, you have vegetable oil. The only thing that has come down really has been the price of pepper, right? Pepper has come down to about almost 25,000 naira from 32,000 recently. Gary has gone up the other way. So basically, it's going to be a berry Christmas right? Not a Merry Christmas. And probably a Sappy New Year. Sappy New Year. Which means that, you know, what you see is what you get, and what you don't see is what gets you. Nigerians don't want to hear that. We'll be eating lots of pepper this Christmas. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rewani. To a chilly, chilly Christmas. A chilly Christmas. Thank you so much. Well, still ahead on the news at 10, the Naira earns over $741 billion from oil and gas in 21 years, according to the latest report released by the Nigeria Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative. We'll have details in business news. Join us again.